ladies and gentlemen, welcome to a, a brand new championship here at Pro League Racing of World Tour Season 2. Obviously, I was here for Season 1 World Tour. If you're not too sure who I am, I am Alex, or Ace is known as the Discord. I am a commentator for various different leagues on ACC and F1, and I am here doing Season 2 coverage uh, for the season here. It's quite a big grid here tonight. Obviously, we were expected to see, I think, if I checked some uh, SGP uh, last, it was 44 drivers, so we are missing a few tonight. We are at a max of 37 cars, which around Red Bull Ring is quite good, to be fair. And I've always noticed one car uh, that's already, uh, let's just say, taken my eye, is uh, we could see Ville, who was a championship uh, winner last season, currently in the right of engineering. Uh, and if you don't know what's so special about that car, I'll come into it later when the race starts. But obviously, it's split qualifying here. Uh, AMS and then the Silvers and the Pros will go out separately. Uh, I think it was after the 15-minute mark or so, so it is. Uh, this season, it does seem, though, it's quite evenly spread in terms of classes. There seems to be a lot more... Uh, am drivers than we have seen in the previous season which is going to make qualifying a bit more difficult for the am class because i believe last season we saw about i think it was 12 to 15 uh amazon going throughout this uh, season we had a few dropouts uh, and then obviously a few just people couldn't make it so we, i think it was probably down to about six which makes qualifying a lot easier for quite a few people that uh, uh, in the AMS class, but this season it seems we have got quite a promising amount uh, of people signed up in the AMS class, which obviously we will probably see some people throughout the season uh, dropping off as we have seen already. What I think is about seven cars haven't been able to make it here tonight, but hopefully throughout the season they will be able to. I don't think there's a maximum amount of drop up rounds uh, you're allowed, but I might be wrong with that. Obviously, after the admins before. Uh, dropping out there's obviously the uh, dropout section in the world tour chat section several anything good luck to Seattle Polska and Gurum uh, two one driver I know I think the other two uh, are drivers I don't think I know as well but obviously this is the thing here uh, with a new championship like this world tour being quite a major one here for pro league having quite a few of the cars was obviously during the off season of World Tour we saw the Drivers World Cup event that wasn't broadcasted uh, because it was more of an off laid event but the World Tour does seem to be quite a bit more major with having a lot more sign ups bear in mind there are about two drivers per team in the driver swap championship so it's probably around the same it's just there's a lot less cars than what you would have been able to see but we do see quite a few new names in terms of Pro League Racing. A few I do recognise from a few other leagues by the name of uh, Max RS. I believe I recognise his name uh, as one of them as well. I'm not sure what from. I have a feeling it might be from FRL. Uh, but, but that's not really relevant at all. But it does seem quite a few people are already setting qualifying times here. Robert Jennings. Uh, in the Bentley this season, obviously he was in the Lamborghini, I believe, for last season, if my memory is correct. Currently on pole position with a 129.4. Now, what we did see during pre-practice is there is quite a significant time difference between the AMs and the Pros uh, in terms of what seemed to be free practice pace, if that is sandbagging and pace from anything. I can't really tell you uh, just yet, but 129.4 is definitely not the fastest we've seen today, so I expect maybe a low 27 to a mid 27 from the pro pace here today so there is obviously a fluctuation in pace difference and that's just bound to happen when you have quite a diverse grid in terms of both car manufacturers and uh, driver's confidence and paces obviously this is also a new track to ACC only been out since I believe it's January uh, it's a track I don't know too well in terms of driving it uh, but in terms of broadcasting, it is pretty simple. There's only about six major corners on this track. And for some reason, and very oddly, that small little kink you can see going into turn two is actually classed as the tur uh, a turn, and is actually classed as turn one. So that is just something 
that makes stuff a bit more weird. And this is one thing I do like about Red Bull Ring. But we do see going on to the qualifying here. Now we do see it already. There has been a change for the lead with Liam Barr. Uh, in the Delta Hunters Ferrari 296. Number 32 was on for quite a good lap there. Having about a 4 tenth gap to his name there. Unfortunately losing it to a bit of unlucky traffic there. But it does seem between P1 and P2. There is a 3,000th of a second gap between them both. So there is pretty much no improvement between the both of them just yet. But I did see... Liam can be on for a better time by what we saw going into Sector 2. Unfortunately, he did have that disruption due to traffic, which is something that will happen. But we do see here Bob Jones in the Don Valley Racing. Currently in P9, 7 times up to his name. Won't be able to put him up any positions just yet. It seems the gap is a bit too big between P8 and P9 for right now. But he is trying to decrease it. But we also see Fratila. The MP8 also coming across the line now. Seven dumps to his name. He's got to go up into P6. That's for two improvements uh, in terms of position that for Lucian Fatila in the BMW M4 number 30. Does seem now he is actually on for an even better time here. So it's actually creeping closer and closer. To that pole position time however we have seen a change in pole position time here from Enrico Itri in E3 racing for 296 129.3 he's going out once again for the final leg of qualifying for the AMS here County 129.3 pretty good qualifying time here for him being able to make a bit of a comfortable gap for himself of about a tenth and a, a tenth and one thousandth of a second to be precise so there's definitely Probably more improvement for him, I can assume. That's why he's going out and trying to make the gap a bit more comfortable. But it seems to be quite close in terms of the AM timeshare, all pretty much within the second part from a few uh, outstanders there. But we do see Fratila on for another lap going through one of the final sections of sector three. Seems to lose a tiny bit of time there, trying to not get that sausage curb on the inside of turn eight, I believe. Through the penultimate and ultimate corner now. Still gaining quite a bit of time here. This could be the lap for pole here. If it might be a tiny bit shy going across the line. We'll find out now. It's got to be a tiny bit shy of 23,000 for the second. Between P1 and 2. Now that's just leaving this really, really close here. And it's going to make it unpredictable. But we have a scene now. James Terry and the Delta Hunters. Aston Martin. Good to see Aston Martin starting to come. Quite a bit more competitive than what we've seen. Uh, in previous versions of the game now for a 129.1 for James Terry making a nearly two tenth gap between him and P2. Do you see going further down there? We do actually see Jury Stick and Woods, I think is how you say it. I apologize if you got a rank in the Golf Levery at McLaren 720s Evo. Coming across the ultimate corner now, a 7 tenths up to his name. So he can actually go up into P9 if he can get this lap valid. And it seems he is going to do it. Lose a tiny bit of time on the exit there. But he's got to go up into P9 and decrease the gap to P8 as well. With a 130.8. Still just over a second uh, to P8 though. So there's quite a bit of improvement to be done to try to actually go up any more positions there. But however, we do see the... Well, that's not even the leader anymore. I've forgotten. It seems Enrico Itri trying to get closer to the pole position time. About one and a half tenths up to his name on Delta for now going into Sector 3. Does seem, though, he has actually got to lose a ton of time going into Turn uh, 3. Losing quite a bit of time. We also see James Terry also improving. Very fractional how much he is actually improving. In fact, he has just lost all of his time going into certain corner complexes as we do see. And coming into the final penultimate and the final corner. Now losing a lot of his time on the exit there. Can he gain it back? No, he cannot. In fact, he actually, he might be able to try. I don't think he'll have enough time to actually be able to try and improve significantly but he's going to come across the line in a negative delta and fortune well, a positive delta sorry for him that 
Sabi Seba Lenny saying, What's up? Does this track favour are you to always reduce you a spinning Lamborghini there, I think that is. Uh what setup does this track favour? Are you talking about brands of setups or are you talking uh preference of setups? Because there's there's two ways you can uh interpret that. Bob Jones and the Don Valley Racing P12 trying to decrease the gap now to P11 of Rally Staz McLaren versus Ferrari. Very uh, modern new Evo cars there for both of them. Next gen GT3s can be a bit difficult as we have seen buttons. One of the amps who haven't actually set a time yet. I'm not sure why. Maybe struggling as we do see there is what seems to be a slow or nearly spinning. Ferrari 296 in the middle of tracking and stop finish line. Luckily, there was no disruptions in terms of that. Like mid arrow, soft bounce, or something else. Uh, instead of this track, is I'll be honest, I have a feeling it's probably going to be lower wing because there's probably more straights than what you do see in corners. Don't quote me on that though, I'm not a SAP engineer by all means. There is definitely a few people who are definitely capable of making good setups. I can make setups, it's just uh, when it comes to being fast, that's not me. <laughs> I don't really race this track track as much as uh, a lot of drivers do. Obviously, this track has uh, been a bit underwhelming for drivers after the release of the Noid for Life in the 1.10 update. Gone into the double figures of the patch updates now, that means we are... Probably looking to go into version 2 soon, unless we don't actually see a version 2, and that's probably what AC Evo, I think it's called. If that was a uh, April Fool's, I don't really know anymore. There's been too many moments that are either <laughs> April Fool's or not, and uh, a second quarter of not being able to tell which one they're actually under. But I'm thinking, yeah, mid to low arrow is probably quite good for this track because there aren't really many corners and most of the corners are quite slow corners anyway so yeah i reckon lower aero corners will probably be the best bet for this track others will probably disagree and i'll probably agree with them to be honest but uh if you're looking to probably make setups there's probably quite a few setup guide sheets i know driver 61 does some if they're still in uh, valid set updates so because I know there's that new uh, I guess it's really like a bug which you just put your dampers all the way down to the softest they can go and then just change the wing until it feels manageable I think it is don't quote me on that if it's wrong it's something like that though because I heard one of my friends talk about it so we do see Delta Hunters now as we do you see uh, the release of the pros and silvers should be in the next two minutes or so I believe to be able to either go up or down in positions we just saw another spinning car there off into the distance so i'm assuming quite a, people, uh, a lot of people are using that lower tc settings which is definitely going to be quite a bit more difficult for some of the drivers but it's very rewarding if you're able to put it off because you can gain quite a few tenths probably as we do you see that was kind of sketchy i don't know why it was sketchy but in my brain it looked really sketchy uh tamas Oh, Thomas Tiberia Victor. That is a name that I won't be able to pronounce ever again. Uh, P12 currently 151.62 is named. Five times up in his pistol. Best lap time could improve here. If he can maintain this gap. No, he needs to try get five tenths to his name. He was about five tenths up going into turn two. Seems to lose a tiny bit of time on the exit there. But he is gaining now just shy of four tenths. Going into turn three. Could actually get up to p11 here if he tries he has been able to actually get that gap quite sh uh, quite shallow now between them two whereas like a jardia baseline meta setup works 90 percent uh, of the time for most cars uh i'm sh i'm assuming that's going to be something affiliated with coach dave delta is it does seem time good quite wide there's he could be able to maintain his time yes he is in fact he's got to gain quite a bit of time through the final chicane, and he's actually about eight times up to his name. He has to just do these two uh, 90 degree right handers almost going into the penultimate and ultimate corner. And if he's second up to his name, he might actually be able to get closer to P10 now with Stick Vought 
comes across the line to set what I'm going to see is a 130 no it's gonna be invalid for him obviously going through that last section I'm assuming something bad did happen but it would have been a 130.947 as you can see on the bottom right of your screen which would have been probably enough nearly for p10 actually just shy of the p10's time does see now he is gaining once again four attempts going into turn two which is quite a bit of time and in fact he is just gonna actually gaining a lot more time on the exit there i'm trying to predict if this is a valid lap and i can actually see if it is currently a valid lap and it is currently a valid lap uh, and he is actually seven times up going into turn three now so he's actually gaining he's actually nearly second up so he, he could be on for quite a good time here for the am glass here and he could probably get into p9 if he can continue this rate of uh, decrease in delta in fact he has just hit the second mark on the negative delta going through the final chicane now he is gonna take it the wrong line it does seem it goes a bit wide there is that invalid i can't tell you yet it doesn't seem to be invalid just yet it's been a stunner of a lap so far and hopefully it isn't uh invalid for him just yet as we go through the final two corners now 1.4 seconds to his name going through to start finish straight. Is it going to be a valid lap time or is it going to be the same as last time? It is going to be a valid lap time going into P10. Very shy there of about 6 thousandths of a second between P9. They're going up to P10 with a 150.305 there. And that is going to be quite a happy uh, Tamas, I believe, being able to actually make such a big gap up. So you do now see race have been unleashed. And now this is where I'm going to talk to you about the previous champion's car here. Obviously, you can see Bill currently in the uh, writer engineering car, which for most people, they will know what's so special about this car. It is, but if you don't, it is quite a difficult car uh, to drive in. Well, you can see even from, I think, 1.7 onwards, I think it was discontinued by Kunos. Uh, so it is still probably quite dodgy as you can see it isn't being able to take the bumps quite well and i think it has a dodgy traction control and i think it's got dodgy or actually no i know it's got dodgy brakes but being able to see the riders still being ran uh in 2024 is quite cool if it's competitive not really because i know vil is quite uh, the alien and drivers, but seeing in practice, it seems he was able to uh, keep up though uh, with the top runners. But I reckon if he was sticking with his original car of the Bentley, something like that, he would be quite further up in the grids. But I think he's just trying to put himself on for a bit of a challenge here. There is quite a few silvers and ams up here tonight. This is going to be a bit difficult for a few of the drivers to be able to get set a valid lap with so many cars on the track. Do you see it seems a few of the liveries haven't been synced if that's on my behalf or their behalf i'm not too sure i apologize if the livery has been done correctly i did sync them before uh the race but i'm not sure how uh reliable my awesome sim racing actually is at the moment so i'm thinking i'm gonna have to spend a bit of time uh, trying to reset everything and probably just delete every single livery because I think I'm close to 3,000 liveries needing to be synced now and it does take quite a, quite a long time uh, to sync them all. I believe it's like 20 minutes or so. So there's definitely probably close to, pro I'm going to say 30 gigs of liveries just for ACC, which is quite nuts to think of it. So I will probably sit down and get it all working for next race. But we do see now first person to actually be setting Valid lap so far seems to be Vink in the test. Aston Martin V8 going into turn three. Right behind the Ferrari 296. If that's going to be an issue for him, I won't be able to tell you just yet. Already a second up from his personal best lap time in free practice. Is this going to be able to overtake the AMs instantly? I'm assuming so, as we do see a few of uh, the pros being able to set that time. Currently, Dean. Zonobovic, who is also streaming, currently in the Group EM racing 
Mercedes AM, AMG, one of my favourite cars and favourite liveries, if I'm being honest, with 128 dead, nearly uh, into the 27s on their first attempts of a lap already. But we do see Dean is actually improving already going into turn four, about one and a half tenths to his name on Delta. So this will be enough for a high 27 if he can just maintain uh, his Delta and actually a valid up as we do see Alavi going across a track line now. Set a 129.3 to be in the mixtures of the AMs and the pros at the moment. But he has got to go back in to get some new tyres. But we do see now Dean going through some of the final corners. Seems to be struggling going through the final chicane. Do you see now Seattle's has actually been able to set the fastest lap time of 127.5, which is the fastest lap time we've seen here today of a pole position. The AF Corsa. Ferrari 296, which is going to be quite hard for some of these cars to beat so far, because that's a four, well, was a four tenth gap there before we saw Dean set another valid lap time of 127.9. So there's still a three and a half tenth gap between P1 and P2, but we do also see Edded as well going through turn three. Trying to maintain his lap time or try to decrease the lap time to Dean. As we can see, it's just over a tenth and a half or a tenth and a quarter. Sorry, between them both. And he is actually on course to take P2 here from him. A name I do recognize from last season. So he is back for season two to try to get better in the standings. Because so I believe he was a silver uh, last season so he has been promoted to a pro class since last time as it does seem going through the final chicane takes it quite efficiently being able to use all of the track we do see there's actually been quite a few improvements there Alexander in the other Mercedes being able to go up into P3 level 127.9 but we might see now Eda taking these two positions from both Dean and Alexander going through the final corner still up on his time but I'm not sure how much it's going to be for him going through the final corner and it's not going to be a valid lap time for him there but it would have been a 127.942 which would put him just behind Dean by a thousand for the second Ville now being able to settle a lap time in that Writer engineering car with 128.9 being able to put himself up into P12 with that car is quite impressive and still on course to set a better lap time if he's able to keep the car in one piece. It does seem he got very loose there going into turn six, I believe that is. We also do see the Danny Montero. Going into turn four on course to set a better lap time. Two and a half tenths to his name. 129 dead is his best lap time so far. Trying to get into the 28th. Actually a Honda. Well known car for Danny. Fortunately I can't see his livery. So I'm assuming we'll have to try resync them. Or if it hasn't been done on his side. But I assume it's my side that might be the issue. So if any of the reads are affected. It seems most of them have been able to sync. So I will have to check that out for next time. Is that still a valid lap time? That seems very very close to the end of the apex. They're going through the final corner. We will see as he's currently 5 tenths up in his best best lap time. We'll be able to put himself into P8 there. As we can see with a 128.492. There's it was barely a lap, valid lap time. Going into the penultimate corner. As we can see now, Nico and the Brotherhood racing Aston Martin V8 Vantage. Getting very close, going into turn three. About four tenths up on his pistol. That's a lap time. Can probably beat Daniel Montero, though, at this rate to try to challenge him for P9 or even Zorik in P8. Another car I did see last season in the World Tour Season 1 of Eric Maguiro in the Amazon Racing livery. Looking quite wide there. Not sure that's a valid lap time still as it does seem he's going to have bought his lap. There unfortunately was about two and a half tenths to three tenths up in his PFS lap time. However, we do see Nico is improving quite significantly here going through the final chicane of turn seven and eight. 
and now we do see him going through to eight or well, ten or well, ten nine and ten really if you do can out count the chicanas two corners it does seem he is still improving quite a bit seeming how to kind of resist going through the corner a bit too much there does seem he is going to set a faster lap time here is it got the challenge daniel material no it isn't because it's not a valid lap time there unfortunately for him he's going to try again still 10 minutes of qualifying though so still plenty of time probably about five lap times and uh, five laps really i'm going to say is he's already three and a half tenths nearly going into the first corner he's actually going to have to try and not lose too much time going past eric mcguero there who i'm also assuming isn't actually uh, on a valid lap time as you can see on the track map it is blue showing he is not on a valid lap time uh gray cars on the track map are having or well, currently on the valid lap nico going into turn four currently nearly four tenths to his name in delta in fact he has just broken the four tenth for mark getting dragged on the apex quite a bit there i'm not sure how much time he's going to lose because of that Seemed to lose about two thousandth of a second, so it wasn't much at all. But he is actually on course to actually challenging Daniel Montero. With five tenths of his name, so yeah. He might just be right behind Declan Brogan even, actually. Those two drivers quite close between each other. Not P9 and 10. Where will this lap time place Nico? And in fact, I think it might be in front of Daniel Montero at the moment. It's currently six and a half tenths, nearly seven tenths open this first best lap time going through the final corner now. So he's going to go on the start finish straight. Seven, eight tenths to his first best lap time going into P8 there with 128.3. Overtaking Zurich as well to put him down into P9. Seven and, well, seven and a quarter, nearly tenths. Uh, to the leader, Seattle not being able to improve just yet. Dean Zonobovic being able to just chug away and ship to the gap between him and Seattle with now just nearly a tenth and a half between them both. Seem to top three are quite separated in terms of lap times, but we did see the laps were a lot closer in terms of the AM class uh, than the Pro class here. Declan Brogan now going to turn four, two and a half tenths to his name on his Delta 128.5, his fastest lap so far. He is very, very close to Daniel Montero uh, in P12 and potentially Ville as well in the writer engineering. Currently with nine tenths, well, nearly a second uh, off the leader. Goes through turn seven and eight. Go through the penultimate on an ultimate corner. Still going to be gaining time. It's very fractional how much he is actually gaining. Going across the line now. He is going to go up into P11 to actually challenge Alavi and Ville. Ville being able to set a faster lap time just behind him now with now a 128.3 compared to Declan Brogan's time of a 128.447. So very little between them both, which now we have seen. There has been an improvement in the lap time from Seattle in pole position with 127.3 gain. Very, very close to those 26s. Not sure if we'll be able to see 26s going on to the end of qualifying, but it does seem Conrad Seattle is going to go straight back out uh, to try finish qualifying for the last six minutes. So about three laps to try well, increase the gap as much as he can. To the rest of the field if it wasn't fair for far enough already
five minutes left of qualifying now we do see there is an improvement coming from alexander but we do see vil right behind him putting some pressure on him to actually well it does seem actually vil will be getting a bit of a toe there as well from alexander who is currently a tenth and a half up on his pistol best lap time to try dig some time to dean zonabovic in p2 there seems to be just well to be precise it seems to be one tenth nine thousandths of a second and five fifths if my maths are correct there there's too many decimal places to actually know what i'm talking about there no it's a hundredth and in fact yeah do you see vil having to let by another car there seems he was not on a valid lap time there as we can see his icon is blue as we can actually see dean is flying with now two tenths his name going into the final corner there as we can see both of them are going to set a lap time for achieve each other but we are going to see he is going to get even closer to seattle's time now with a 127.38 eight well 800 for the seconds between them both Chris Broadmont currently in the HRT Mercedes. So it seems Mercedes are becoming quite popular in this league. There seems to be three of them, but the three are quite good in pace so far. P2, P3, P17 in terms of Mercedes so far. So the pace seems to be quite good and promising for the Mercedes once again, obviously. With Norge for Life, I believe they're quite nice at the Norge for Life as well. Currently, Chris Broadman fighting to keep a negative delta time going through turn six. It's quite wide there. I'm not sure how valid that lap time is going to be. He does lose a lot of time on the exit there, but we do see that Eric Maguiro just behind him there going into the end of turn eight, getting very, very wide on the exit as we do see. I think that's Greg Ellis as well behind him in the Ferrari 296. Uh, who doesn't seem to be improving just yet, but we do see Eric Maguiro. Coming across the line to actually take just under two tenths and lost quite a bit of time actually on the exit. But he is going to go across for two, well, just a tenth and a half actually. Uh, after losing about a 500 for the second from the final corner. But he is gaining once again going into turn one. There's so much time you can actually gain into turn one. It's just how confident you can actually be going through and how close you can get to that apex. Because you can't just place your car in the middle of the apex because you will go flying either way. Zorikic currently P11 looking to improve his time but he's actually losing quite a bit of time going through what seems to be just chicane going into turn 9 and 10 he is gaining once again it's not too much so he might be able to get closer to P10 but he does lose all of his time on the exit unfortunately for him two minutes left of qualifying with see Chris Broadman improving going into turn 5 now it does seem he's going to be quite close to actually challenging uh, Vil and Zoreki kick. I think if he can actually keep this lap time in 10 but loses a bit of time going into the entrance of the chicane. 10, 9 and 10 could be a different story here for Chris. You could either gain so much time through them or lose so much time. Because track limits are quite strict here as well. That's another thing we haven't talked about just yet. Going through to the race is drive through penalties. Something... You mainly get applied for uh, if you reached over three track limits going into the race. Which I feel like around this track could be quite easy. So you can easily run wide going into turn one. I feel like turn two could be a culprit as well. That's especially, well not turn two, turn three sorry. But <laughs> I'm going to have to see because I haven't done too much broadcasting around a track like Red Bull Ring, in fact, I'm not looking forward to Norwich Fife commentary at all. Being able to have to try and remember 150 odd names, or is it 170? It's one of the two figures. I'm pretty sure different people uh, have different numbers for corners because I feel like with a track like that, you can't really get an accurate number without the official Norwich Fife 
crew being able to tell what is defined as a corner or not because you could actually uh, technically count a chicane as one corner or two corners but I count them usually as two corners so that's why you could see me saying nine and ten it could be eight and nine in terms of corners but that's just down to how my track map says it it might be different for different ones but that is just what I refer them to Chris Broadman now going through the final corner about a tenth and a half up in his best lap time will be able to potentially put some pressure down on Greg Ellis but it's not going to be a valid lap time unfortunately for him in fact it seems he lost quite a bit of well, a lot of lap time going on to the final corner as the max wait time awaits us now Do you see a few people now finishing their qualifying times? We do see Vink having to do his final lap here, trying to push to stay in. The negative deltas going into P5, which is quite good here. For him, the highest scoring Aston Martin at the moment. Still very fractional how much he is actually gaining. Do you see he's fighting to keep it? A negative delta going through turn five. In fact, he might be able to gain some time going on to the chicane because there's a lot of time to be shaved out going through the chicane of turn seven and eight. Looks like going to be losing some time, but going on to the final two corners. Can he gain any time? It doesn't seem he's able to, or he's fighting, and it won't be enough to improve. Unfortunately, he will back out of his lap there and just return to garage. Seems one of the only cars, in fact, the only car still out, seems to be Seremovic. Currently in P8, trying to improve. Currently 500 for the second, gaining on the Delta so far with a 128.225, so still. Quite a fast lap time and not too far between him and Pop Popelia uh, in P7 in the Lamborghini. One of the only Lamborghinis. In fact, there is only two Lamborghinis, uh, I believe, in this championship. There might be more because we are missing seven drivers. But for today, there are only two Lamborghinis, Popelia being currently in P7. And then Declan Broglin being the F1 in P13. We do see now 720s yes, Evo seems we're going into the barrier. Just having a very bad accent, fortunately for him. He was up probably 500 of a second going through it, but it's not going to be enough for him. Do you see now we go straight in? Do you just have to try and go with it? It's quite a long session of wait time, so what I will do. Oh, that's something I haven't actually done. I'm actually going to do this. But you can't see anything just yet. But that is completely normal. So I apologise about this. This is something I should have actually done last season. But we do see now just waiting for the drivers to actually go and choose their setups. Hopefully no one does that issue of underfueling. That has been something that we have seen a few times in the past. Is people underfueling just on the line. But what we will try to do is try to get quite a quick track walk going. It is going to be quite a quick one though because we don't have too much time indeed. But we will try to get through as many of them as we possibly can. So what we do go on is into the game though, as we can see, currently Seattle in P1. Then followed with Dean Zonabovic, currently in P2 with the Mercedes, the highest scoring Mercedes, followed then by uh, Kukovic, currently in P3 with another Mercedes being of Mercedes 2 and 3 at the moment, followed by Eded in the McLaren 720S, uh, number 21 in P4, followed by Vink in the test, Atom, Aston Martin V8, Vantage livery, followed then by Alavi in P2. Six, the second highest scoring McLaren, or not McLaren, Ferrari 296, followed then by Popelia in P7, the highest scoring uh, 
Lamborghini, followed by Sremovic, currently in P8. The highest scoring Ams, currently in P1 for the Ams and P8 overall. Followed then by the writer engineering of Ville, currently number one, P number nine, but number one in car class. I, well, not in car class, but car number. Followed then by, I think it's Paul Weather uh, in the number 35 for our 296. Followed then by Vlamovic, I think it is. Uh, that's the name of that's gonna be a long name to try to say in currently in P11, currently P3 in class, followed then by Zorovic, Zorovic, oh, I'm not even gonna try to pronounce that for our 296 in P5, followed then by Declan Brogan in the final Lamborghini. We'll see here tonight, currently in P, I believe, P5 in class, followed then by Daniel Montero in the Honda number seven in P14, followed by Greg Ellis in the PLR Esports for our 296. Currently in P15, then followed by Baxes, I think it is. Uh, currently in P16, the number 8. McLaren 720s Evo, followed by Chris Broadman in the DK Racing, I believe, uh, Mercedes AMG Evo. Uh, and then followed by, I think it's Adam Fox in the Porsche 992, number 11, followed then by, I think it's also, it might be Andy Jones in the BMW M4, number 36, then followed by. Eric Maguero in the Amazon Racing. Followed then by one of the only Bentleys on the grid here tonight. Currently in P. Uh, P21 with num oh, number 38, Cook. Followed then by James Terry, the first of the Ams. Currently in P22, P1 in class for the Ams. Followed then by Robert Jennings, P2, the number 99. Bentley then followed by... We're not going to have enough time here, so we will just have to scoot through all of them and try to see as many as we can. Good to see quite a big grid here though tonight compared to what I have seen in the past not just at this league but there has been a few leagues in the past that have been a bit on the uh, spa side but it seems this is going to be quite a challenging league for quite a few of the drivers because there is quite a few drivers here tonight as we go we go green for the formation lap yeah, quite a long formation lap uh, of the full circuit formation lap, which you won't see at every track in the game. Well, not every league. Sometimes people do do the full formation lap. Some people do the semi formation lap. It's all really down to the league and what they choose it to be. Full formation laps does benefit to the drivers quite a bit because they can actually put heat in the brakes and the tyres compared to what you can see on short formation lap, which is probably about two corners, I believe it is. Uh, but... At like a tracker like the Neuschweifer, for example, is still quite a long formation lap to be classed as a short one. Seattle again. I'm not sure what's happening here, but leading the pack. Well, it seems Dean was leading the pack for a second, but this is all down to my ACC race control going a bit bizarre. go through into sector three as you can see on the track map do you see the cars will be formating into a two way as soon as it seems yet it has sped off a tiny bit there but we do see now most of the grid will be formating in a side by side configuration in the next i assume probably corner or so as we do see a few of them probably further up have being assigned to do it, as we can see side by sides starting to be formed to start this race yet. Bob is sandwiched by the Mercedes. Yeah, that's probably not a place you want to be. As you can see, it seems a few of the uh, starting grids are a bit messed up. I'm pretty sure Dean Zonabovic is on the wrong side. I'm not sure anymore, but we'll see what happens here. As we go through the final corner, as we get ready. 
as we're about to go green here for the first opening round here at Pro League Racing for the World Tour Season 2. He will be able to come out victorious for round 1 as we can see. I think the grid order has gone a bit funky as we have gone green as we go on board with Dean Donovan who hasn't got a drive through penalty I believe. Uh, so he does stay in the lead for now, getting the inside line, which is definitely a line you want to take. But it seems he has to get so much more speed going into turn one. So we see quite a few drivers going quite well, quite wide going into turn one. That is going to be a few drive through penalties, I assume. Not drive through, even just track limits, sorry. But we do see going further down the pack. We don't see any sort of accidents just yet, but going into turn two now. Everyone being able to take it clean. Turn three is quite a major corner to have the inside line into, but we do see... It does seem to be working for most people here, being able to go side by side at least two wide. You could probably even go three wide as we can see a few people going uh, quite wide once again into the sharp hairpins like the corners, which we do see now on board with Ville currently in P7 being able to try get past what seems to be the McLaren or Ceremovic who was originally in front of him having the inside line going into turn. Five is quite crucial, and he has been able to do it. Is there going to be any sort of switchback? No, it does seem Saramovic is going to be under a lot more pressure now from the Ferrari of Alavi. He's been able to take the place, having the inside line into both five and six. But we can actually see he could lose another position here to uh, what will seem to be Vlamovic, who did go very wide into the chicane and goes onto the gravel, and it's going to lose a lot of speed and power, and even positions as well going into... The first lap, so the end of the first lap, we do see there has been quite a gap now created by Seattle of a 1.7 second gap, which is very, very beneficial here for Seattle, but it isn't the fastest lap. We haven't really seen a correct lap just yet because everyone has been fighting just yet, but it seems Vincent 134.792, but that will definitely go down in terms of pace for now. But we do see Witter going side by side here with the Bentley of Robert Jennings. Is it going to be able to? There is a BMW going. What seems to be doing don't is there into turn one. I feel like that might be a bit of a spin, but we do see a side by side. But it does seem Jeffrey Witter is not going to have the overspeed there on the Robert Jennings, having a very, very powerful Bentley. He's just going to tackle away there. As we do see, it seems a bit of a a bit of a lunge there from Lee and Burrow as they got to go side by side. There's going to be a big contact there. It does seem the BMW is going to go very, very wide there. Unfortunately, spinning out because he didn't leave too much room, I don't think, to Liam going into turn three and that's going to cause a very very slow i think that's a jeffrey witter now going all the way down to the back of the pack there as we do see uh renato saying lots of amps yeah there's quite a few amps here tonight compared to what we saw last season as we do see jeffrey witter trying to fight back after what we saw same with the bmw m4 of what i believe is max rs no it's not max rs i'm not sure who that bmw was but was a victim going into turn one i believe as we do see drazen susan jar Jara, I'm sorry if I apologize, uh, apologize if I said that wrong. Saying hello, good evening to you, or I assume it's evening for you as well. So we do see now Dabrowski trying to go side by side with the Porsche of Buttons going in to turn, uh, turn 9. As it does seem, he's going to have the inside line, which is very effective. But there's going to be a bit of a switch back as we do see there's a bit of rowdiness from the air wash, I believe. So we do see now Button stays as ahead of Dabrowski for now, but we do see there's a bit of challenge for Max RS as it does seem as we will get on board with the wing cam as we can see he is just there, but it is going to be side by side going into turn one. Same machinery here of the BMWs, but does he Max RS almost lets him go there? It's obviously not worth fighting it as we do see quite a few cars there going wide into turn one again. We've got to be very close to at least seeing some drive through penalties appearing very soon. Uh, like Schumacher. All right, I'll just call you Schumacher then. Uh, Shoes and Jara. Have I said it right that time? Sorry, any European names I will bottle, and this is why Pro League Racing is definitely starting to improve my reading skills, to say the least. Like Dragin, Dragin. Dra oh my days! I don't like it. Drajin Shujin Jara. I'm going to write that on a post it note so I'll remember for next time. <laughs> do you see now? Ed Ed in well, quite a bad position here. It does seem two cars catching in, but we do see Bill in P4 at the moment, currently under a lot of risk and pressure from losing these two positions. He is actually seeming to be quite high speed going into turn one. Well, onto the start finish straight. It does seem he's probably wing, well, very lower wing. 
compared to the 720S and Vink in the Aston Martin. It seems he just absolutely gaps these two cars behind him. And yeah, I'm assuming he's running quite a low wing, but it does seem the Gallardo is quite good on top and speed compared to some of the newer Gen Evo cars, which is one of the advantage points for this writer engineering, which is a car you just do not see often anymore. I agree with you. Let's just watch the race instead of bullying my English skills. But we do see Daniel Montero now into P14, but looking to put a tiny bit of pressure there to Chris Broadman in the Mercedes of the DK rating. They are very close between each other, but they are almost rear round quarter there. If he does battle too hard, we can see Greg Ellis ready to take the position there. As we do see Chris Broadman going wide into turn four, going to lose two positions there from that small little mistake from both Daniel Montero and Greg Ellis going up into P14. And, well, I think, no, it's going to be P13 and 14. Going further up, though, we do see now seems Conrad Seattle has been able to make about a 3.5 second gap for himself going into lap four. Now, as we do see Dean Donovic in the background as well, he's been able to make about a 4.5 second gap to Alexander in the P3 of the Mercedes. And then going further up, we do see Ville is under a lot of pressure here from Ed Ed, which is going to cause the gaps to increase between the top three at the moment. But we do see Ville, this is where his advantage point is going into turn one as he just, as you can just see how much he gaps him with that, I guess, lower lower wing or even DRS, you could probably say with this writer engineering. But that is going to be something going into the calendar with the longest straights. This car will uh, absolutely roll because I, I think we're going to pull Ricard next, I think. I could be wrong now, and I feel like this uh, writer might be quite far to that track, but obviously there are a few corners that are very aero reliant, especially the corner after the, after the big straight, which are obviously in F1, has the Combs anti-McLaren season. Uh, yeah, you could actually say that. There aren't many McLaren. It does McLarens. I think there's probably about five also, so <laughs> it does seem this league is very anti-McLaren, which I, I'm, I'm all aboard, to be honest. I drive the McLaren, but uh, I do seem to be driving the M4 a lot more than what I uh, used to be. But we did see, obviously, hints of uh, M4 Evo in real life. That we do see Nico ticking a lot of that inside Sausage Cube. As we can actually see now, uh, Cook could actually take the outside line and just fly past there as it does seem he does so he doesn't want to lose too much time there as we do see the 902 as well he actually comes in for an undercut here pit rules here are mandatory tire change for tonight that's it so that's a, at least a minimum of 30 seconds doesn't seem he has damage i assume he's just going to try to do this as quickly as can not sure how effective it's going to be he just has to nail it and hopefully all of these cars lose a lot of time, but it could actually be quite a good strategy because all of these cars are quite close in terms of pace at the moment, and we do see quite a few battles. Uh, so they are going to lose quite a bit of time, so it might be worth going into the pits now because you'll lose probably less time than you would if it was an open-air track. But Tom Week now, uh, <laughs> in a, livery, a beautiful livery, uh, getting a lot of pressure from Robert Jennings behind one of three, I believe, or is it two? I think it's two Bentleys. Uh, in this season obviously Ville used to race the Bentley won the championship last season for the starting season of the Wood Tour Thomas is well under quite a bit of pressure from Buttons as well going through turn 5 he is actually getting a tiny bit of time before going into sector 3 Obviously, the McLaren is a lot better in aero corners, such as the high-speed corners, compared to the 992, but the 992 still gains quite a bit of time going into the final chicane. Tom Week now having the slipstream going into uh, turn one. He is going to just not take the slipstream, though, as we do also see going into... Turn one, James Terry getting very, very close to the back of. Sorry, it's Anthony Fox. I apologise for that. I've been calling him Andy. I think I know too many people called Andy Fox now, but we do see he is well losing quite a bit of time to the Bentley in front. So that's going to lead him to be leading this, or you could say, 
almost a train here and having that disadvantage with no slipstream isn't as bad as F1 because I've been doing a lot of F1 commentary recently. But it's still quite bad because the slipstream can be quite effective even in this game uh, in GT3. So we do see there's a yellow flag. Not sure where it is but the yellow flag seems to be. I think there's Chris Broadman going onto the grass into turn four. Seems he is back on though for now. Going to lose quite a few positions there. Seems he struggled through turn four for quite a few laps now because he did it obviously when he was under pressure from Daniel Montero which made him lose both the position of Daniel Monteros and Greg Ellis's place, causing both of them going up into P13 and 14. Now battling with Shremovic, who is actually quite far ahead of them for now. Actually, no, they aren't actually. These three drivers are quite close with each other. But it does actually seem Eric is actually now ahead of Greg Ellis, I believe. I can't actually see where Greg Ellis is. I'm assuming, I think Greg Ellis has pitted. No, he hasn't pitted. It seems he has some sort of issue uh, going into the previous laps and put himself down to P26 there. He had to try getting back these positions now. Again, Anthony Fox in this like small little train here. You can see it's starting to form about five or six cars in distance. It could even be close to nine. Or 10, depending on the pace of each other. But we do see what seems to be Itchery. One of the faster drivers we see in the AMS class. Also catching up. But if we do see Anthony Fox battle too hard to try and get past James Terry. It could lead to this entire train catching up. Of what I can see is about six cars behind them. Uh, which can mean if you make a small mistake, you could lose six positions quite quickly. So we're getting close to 50 minutes into this race now already. This does seem we will start seeing a few people pitting here and there. As we do see, if we go further down, only one person, two people have pitted so far of Nico. He's having quite a lonely race. We can actually see the leader already getting close to him there. But that's because he has pitted and the leader hasn't just yet. Then Wichter in the McLaren 720S Evo, who we haven't actually seen today here. So this is his first time on broadcast. But did he, as I think he had damage because he seems to be two laps down already, unfortunately. So we do see here we go Vink now trying to get past well he's trying to get past Ville but Ville is also trying to defend from Vink and Vink is also trying to defend from Edit as we actually see a side by side happening it's does seem Alavi is going to try and go for a switch back going into turn three he almost had it there but it just seems the Lamborghini of Popelia just closed the door quite quickly there which just caused him to have to retaliate a tiny bit and just wait until next time So my chair wasn't going down there, but it's, it's gone down now. Sorry if you heard that. We will just go on the back of Papilia is wing now. So it does seem he is actually getting quite a bit of time going into sector three. But can we see Olavi gain some time back going into sector three? In fact, it does seem this is where Papella or Papilia. I'm not sure how you say your name. I apologise. Started to gain quite a bit of time. I've actually increased the gap between him and Arlavi. Which we can also see well behind as well. Actually gained quite a bit of time there. This is where the Lamborghini will struggle go onto these big straights. Because they are, I think it's the weakest GT3 in terms of top end speed as you can see here it's almost like this drs for the other cars as we did see there's a yellow flag uh, i'm not sure where the yellow flag is being present it isn't showing on my screen annoyingly but i think it's going to be further down there as we do now see and then almost trying to retaliate to get past but this yellow flag's still going so it does see max rs has a bit of damage going into the final corner not sure if it's something to do with him, so we'll just go back with him. No, it just seems he's had this damage for some time here. Unfortunately for him, we'll have to be able to carry that damage for as long as he can going into the pit stop. So he might have to just pit earlier. Because no, that seems like quite a bit of damage. Could be probably closer to 20 seconds of damage. We are starting to see more people pitting now. The tyres, as we see now, really starts in the pits to change tyres. We also see, I think it's, yeah. Osric Major as well in the McLaren 720s either. Seems to have quite 
good pace trying to unlap himself after going for the tyres so the handicap might be quite effective for some of them Vink in the Aston Martin V8 now putting a lot more pressure on Ville Ville going up to P3 already in the Ryder Engineering is something I don't think I would ever see in 1.10 but it does seem he's been able to do it but this train behind them starting to get a bit rowdy here we just need to hope Ville can actually hold off Vink, in fact, he does seem he's gaining a bit of a gap to the train behind because all of them were quite close with one another. But it seems Vink and Villa started to pull away from the rest of the gap. However, we do see there's going to be a side by side going into turn two now. Turn two, very, very shallow corner, so there's not much of an overtaking opportunity. But going into turn three, we do see Declan Brogan's going to have the inside line, which is crucial going into this. But it does seem he has a bit of hesitation getting on the accelerator there. But we do see now. Declan Brogan still having the inside line going into turn four, which is definitely another major point of trying to go uh, for the inside line and trying to maintain his position, which Declan Brogan is being able to do at the moment. In fact, he is actually going to be able to keep the position. I have to see if he will be able to get back at some point and try to get in within P9's range, but to see him. Declan Brogan's being able to get a bit more pace now going into the chicane, but it seems he went a bit wide there, losing a tiny bit of time, but it's literally fractional how much he has actually lost, as it just seems. Seb only saying the wrecks are going strong. Uh, she, uh, I'm trying to think. I'm trying to think who that is. I'm not, oh, I'm not sure who Rex is. Unfortunately, I'm still quite new to quite a few of the people here. So, see, there's a lot of damage there to Ed's car. He's, we did see he was in. I think it's in P, P8 or P7 earlier. Oh, right, it is kind of... Oh, I see, yeah. I, I am just sh uh, shocked at you, it seems. See, it's actually under still a lot of pressure. It does seem now that Slipstream is helping Vink quite a bit going into turn three. All over the back of him now. He just wants to try and get on that accelerator quite early. As you can see, the acceleration from Bill's Rex car is quite significant compared to Vink and he just wants to try break that slipstream as quickly as he can 0.4 seconds currently the gap but it does seem Vink breaks a bit later going into turn four and he's going to get well both of them gets on the uh, the accelerator quite quickly but the gap is starting to decrease again between the both of them what we do see is Daniel Montero trying to go all over the back of Saremovic I'm not sure what happened there but it does seem Saremovic not handling the pressure too well it seems going into turn five and this is, in my opinion, this might be one of the best sounding car, cars in the game, the Honda NSX. It just sounds absolutely amazing. It seems Daniel Montero not being able to catch up once again with Saremovic. I'm not sure what happens with Saremovic. I think he just got a bit wide going into turn five because there's little margin for error going into it. So we now see this could be where Bill's podium stick could end here. For him, as we do see now, Vink all over the back of him as I go on board with the wrong car. They are going to go side by side, but it does seem Vil is going to continue in P3 for now. But they are battling quite hard as we can actually see our Lavi in the background catching up as we do see Ed Ed there uh, being looked to get an overlap from the rest of the field at the moment after unfortunately having to pit for damage earlier. Itri as well trying to put some pressure there on Cook. Currently, the highest. I think the highest uh, Bentley. Yeah, he is the highest Bentley by one position, two positions to be exact. But we do see now he's actually under more pr uh, pressure from another Bentley being in this Bentley sandwich from Robert Jennings. It could be a Bentley versus Bentley championship. I'm looking at it because they are in the exact same machinery car and I assume they're on probably similar setups by the pace of them. Uh, Sremovic now losing Daniel Montero and looking to try get back with Declan Brogan as this is what we saw earlier. Getting a bit wider as we do see I think as Ed going slower into turn six. I'm not sure what happened there for him. Going into turn seven and eight it does seem he is going to be able to go side by side now. It's not going to work but if they just battle too hard here, we can see Daniel Montero catching up very, very wide there by Sremovic, which does cause Daniel Montero to actually catch up quite significantly, as we can also see now the Mercedes of, I think that's Alexander catching up as well. So this could be a four-way train here. And now because of Sremovic's mistake, I'm having to, uh, well, 
make a bit of a, a defensive move, you could say, and almost letting Daniel Montero buy, but almost nearly killing <laughs> Tremovic by going a bit loose, going on to the ultimate corner. Uh, did lead to him now losing quite a bit of time to Alexander behind, and they are actually looking to go side by side into turn three, but they aren't just yet as he just waits behind for now going into turn four. Pit stops are starting to become more and more present with a few drivers. So you see Jeffrey Witten now having the inside line going into turn two and three. Obviously turn two not being a very good overtaking zone, but turn three is, but it does seem turn two was just enough to uh, break the side by side between uh, Revok and Witter, but we now do see just because of that small mistake, it does seem Itri's going to go side by side with Victor, and Victor almost about to get past as Itri will have uh, the inside line going into turn four, but it's not going to help him as it just backs off a tiny bit. So I think Victor did just break quite a bit later than him. So now going to go side by side once again. No, he's not, he's just going to tuck behind him and wait, but we do go further up once again as we do see Zorovic all over the rear of oh, Vink now it seems yeah I think yeah no what happened with the writer Vil now going down to P11 so something must have happened with the writer earlier on as I didn't see what happened with it but we do see Daniel Montero going into the pits now one of the earlier drivers to go into the pits trying to get the undercut on the rest of the drivers as we do have 38 minutes left of the race so we will start seeing quite a few drivers coming in in the next eight minutes or so trying to split the uh tires evenly is pretty crucial to be honest but we do see you no know, jeffrey witter once again trying to get closer to revok but he needs to be really careful of how he does this because if he battles too hard as you can see almost dive bombs going into turn three which has let him to actually go side by side there as we do see as well Victor and Itchy and also Jones all trying to get past as well as actually Itchy lost that position to Jones going into turn uh, turn three now turn four it does seem Itchy's on every disadvantage here going into turn four not having the inside line but it does seem Itchy actually gets quite a good exit there but it's not going to be enough as we do see he's just going to stay behind for now can't see him just yet in the interior camp. Does seem to be short shift a bit, so he's going to lose a tiny bit of time going into turn five, six, and seven. Removic now got to go side by side going into turn three. It does seem no Declan Brogan will defend as much as he can have in the inside line going into turn three, which has now left Alexander as close as he can possibly get. As it does seem though, Sremovic is losing a bit of time. We can use the rear wing as reference to see how much time Alexander can actually gain under slipstream. It doesn't seem to be too much going into turn four, but it does seem Sremovic under a lot of pressure and he actually goes on the grass there. Slash gravel going into turn four, and that just, just easily let Alexander pass. As now we have to see a repeat of can Declan Broken hold off Alexander? Alexander obviously was in P4 originally, I believe. Or uh, his Mercedes of Crowd Strike Racing by Riley Motorsports, obviously a real life team. See, we are losing a few battles here, but James Terry is trying to get past. I think it's Brent Jones, I believe. No, it's Bob Jones, sorry. So they nearly make contact there. So it seems Bob Jones just having to hesitate a tiny bit there, which just easily lets by Liam there. So Liam's going to have a tackle to try and get past. That's not Liam. I'm not sure who that is. I think that might have been a lapped car already. This just shows you how diverse the pace actually is going into... Uh, this season already as we can actually see Vink being able to get a move done there what seems to be I think that is Mr Weller yes it is Paul Weller now going into P5 and Vink going up to P4 which now Vink going up into his original position 
this time not having to worry about Ville, it seems now have to tr try and get past Alavi. So we do see, looking at the best lap times here, it does seem uh, Vink is better than Alavi at the moment with a 128.8, or 128.7, sorry, is the best lap for Alavi uh, during the race and a 128.5 for Vink. <laughs> Everything's messing up. As we see what has just happened there. I'm not even sure whose car that was, but that seems to be Paul Weller going into the gravel trap there as we will get a replay there. I think he just got on the apex a bit too loosely there. As we do see, yeah, he just doesn't hold his brakes either, it seems. It does seem he tried holding his brakes in the end. It just came to quite a bit of damage. That is quite a common mistake, unfortunately, for Paul Weller as he goes into the wall. He will be coming to the pits there. It does seem he struggles to enter the pit lane there as he has to hit for this damage it seems there is another yellow flag but i'm not getting any yellow flags on race control here which is actually annoying me a tiny bit because i can't see where everything's coming from so i'm actually going to try change that now oh, it doesn't seem to be giving me anything unfortunately but I'm not sure what happened with the other cars. It seems Sabo making an unintentional pun, you could say. A bit well, am I right? <laughs> that might be his new uh, nickname, Drive Weller. Did you see Nico getting a drive through in P24? I'm not sure what that's for, but I'm going to assume. That's track limits as we have seen and we have witnessed quite a few people going wide, especially into turn two uh, and one. But obviously turn nine could be a killer in turn. Well, it's turn eight, actually. I'm, I'm getting my corner names mixed up now. But turn eight, the one that you just came in from, uh, can be a killer for track limits as well as it does seem. Now, Nico is going to lose quite a few positions because of this. Obviously, in our race, isn't that much time to gain between each other. But currently, the biggest winner in terms of position seems to be uh, Mr. Hutton's Buttons currently in the Delta Hunters 992 if that's his real name that is a brilliant name currently gaining 24 positions and unfortunately I'm also going to, to say this currently the biggest loser in positions is Zalactico Edheads losing 24 positions so there is an exact amount between them two at the moment I just got really scared by, by George Morgan talking in the background. I don't know why that scared me so much, but... Do you see now a few of these... battles starting to appear once again. Greg Ellis after coming out of the pits. Now I've got to go side by side with Itchy for position. It seems it does seem Greg Ellis has a bit of damage to the front of the 296. I'm not sure what's caused that, but there's definitely quite a recent bit of damage there. Itchy... Going a bit wide, going into turn three. That is going to cause him to lose a lot of time to Greg Ellis. Going into straight before turn four, as it's now going to probably be side by side almost. In fact, is Greg Ellis going to break later? No, he's not. He's just going to stay behind and play the more safer line. As we see, Okta and Osric, sorry, going back into the pits. I'm not sure what for, unless he's retired. But I don't think he has, but we'll keep an update on what's happened there. Ed Ed now going for the position. Once again, it does seem Liam Barr is going to go side by side going into turn 9. That was a huge lunge there, but that worked there for Edith as he goes up into P27. That was a beautiful lunge there from here, but is there going to be any sort of retaliation from Liam just yet? It doesn't seem he's going to have any run-up going into the start finish straight. He is just going to have to stay down into P27 for now, I believe it is. But is there going to be any sort of moves going into... This longer straight is he has got the potential of gaining slipstream, but it's not going to be enough. It's the first time Ed Ed gains another time going into turn one. So he's now looking to try and put a bit of pressure on Eric Maguro, who I'm not sure where Eric Maguro is. I assume that might be a back marker, but it seems Eric Maguro, if I look on my relatives tab. Now, Maguro's in P9, yeah, so he has to try and get past him, and it seems he is. At a moment quicker than P9, so that is quite unfortunate there for Edez, who could have been quite far up. He's battling for P3. Currently, P3 uh, is behind him, is going to be Vink, currently just three seconds behind him uh, of the Aston Martin Tesla V8. 
Uh, and then we do see Dean currently in P1 after we do see Seattle going into the pits there. So there isn't too much between Dean and Zonobovic. Well, I just said Dean. I mean, Zonobovic and Seattle. But it's all going to change now because the pits are starting to become more and more popular as, as we do see another three cars coming into the pits. Which is going to change everyone's positions up. So everything's not really in a net position just yet. As we can see now. The Broski under a but trying to put a bit of pressure on Tom Week going into turn two and three. As it does seem he's all over the rear of Tom Week. That did quite a good job of not going into the rear and punting him off. As now it's a very, very small gap. Probably just over two or three car lengths between them both. Gave me a bit of OCD, so I just decided to move it down a bit. Do you see that Tom Week under quite a bit more pressure than what he was at originally? It does seem though Tom Week and um, well, no, Dabrowski hasn't pitted yet, so he doesn't actually have to fight. Uh, here Tom Week, he could just let Dabrowski buy as it doesn't even need to happen as Dabrowski goes into the pits to save his mandatory pit stop of tyres, 28 minutes left to go of the race we do see going further up though as well the entire front grid's changed once again as we do see Dean Sonobovic, who hasn't pitted just yet, currently in P1, then followed by Brogan, and then we do see the P3, 4, and 5 all going into the pits. Then Seattle, who is out of pits, once again trying to catch up to Dean Sonobovic. Seems at about four corners between them both, but at the moment, obviously, Dean needs to pit, so Seattle is currently net P1, then followed by Alavi being net P2, I believe. Then followed by Vink in net P3, then followed by Zorakic. In that P4, and then the rest might change as I'm not too sure yet. But James Terry gonna go side by side going into turn four. It does seem he lost the position to I'm not even sure who that is actually who he's lost it to. I don't even think Robert Jennings is close. It seems he's trying to battle with Tom Week, I believe. As we can see. No, it's not Tom Week. I just think I'm not sure what's happening here. I think my ACC race control is a bit broken, but there is a bit of a battle going on here it seems that's Paul Weller sorry and James Terry as it decides to refresh trying to go side by side with each other it seems the blue flag has been waved as a few of these cars are faster than one another on different laps do you see there the Lamborghini of what I believe is Declan Brogan going into pits now so his mandatory pits up three do you see James Terry almost offing the pace a tiny bit to wait to see Robert Jennings and Paul Weller to battle and he just does the easy job of being able to overtake both of them when they start making mistakes which going further and further into the race is more and more prone to happen because a few of these drivers might become a bit more impatient after being stuck behind the driver for so long and they want that position quicker obviously it's not the greatest idea to do more aggressive moves here as we do see now Andrew Jones going from the inside line going into turn one as he is going to have position quite easy there as it doesn't seem Nick to even fight for the position as Andrew Jones goes up into P25 as we now see Greg Ellis trying to get past Andrew Jones as well. That's not Andrew Jones, that's Victor, sorry, but we do see going into turn three. He is going to be able to just break a tiny bit later, which he does also have the inside line. Victor losing two positions in the course of a sector, unfortunately for him. Going down into P27, Greg Ellis up into P26, and then we do see Andrew Jones going up into P25. And now there's quite a, a big gap between P25 and 24, but we do see Ed now making positions as he does get a bit loose there, almost crashing in to the back of Cook. As he does now see Cook and Ed being a bit aggressive with each other, but to see Ed gets the position done, going up into P20 as he will start pulling away now from Cook as they are in different classes and they're probably different paced. Uh, categorized as well as we do see Ed was quite far up in terms of qualifying. He has lost 
a whopping 16 positions since the start of this race. So he was originally P4, so he's going to have the same pace as the top runners with the top five or so. So remember, they're getting close to Daniel Matera. No, he's not. He's getting close to... I think that's Declan Brogan in P9, I believe, but it's not all changed just yet. This is going to be for position nonetheless. Not able to gain into turn uh, 6 and 7. Turns 8 and 9, though. Will be closer as we do see the writer engineering car of Ville also in the background. Also, will be catching up a tiny bit with that straight end speed of the start finish straight and the straight after turn one. Quite significant factors for Bill of catching up in any turns as you can see. He's actually just kept caught up a tenth or so going through the start finish straight, which just shows you how powerful that car is. We see we do see Alexander all over the rear now. Of Popella as they are going to go side by side going into turn two and three as it does seem though Alexander will have the disadvantage of having the outside line going into turn three and it doesn't seem to match as it does seem Popella almost going to neutral then which is not going very fast at all almost parking it unfortunately losing the position as Alexander goes up into P6 from quite a good move there and Popella goes down into P7 so we also now see in front of it is Zorikic who's also for position so we could see Alexander go up another position here in, in the meantime. Current order is as follows. As I believe everyone has pitted here. As we go further down. Everyone has pitted now. As we have seen two retirements. Since the start of this race. It's been fortunate. But it does happen in most leagues. Uh, retirements usually mean. Someone's had quite a bad race. Or it could be a disconnect. Knowing ATC we can't really tell. Twenty-three minutes left to go. We will just go through the current orders. We do see Seattle in P1 at the moment, followed by Zonobovic, Alavi, Vink, Zorakic, Alexander, Popella, Daniel Matero, Sremovic, Declan Brogan, Vil, Eric Maguero, Chris Broadman, Tom Week, Paul Weller, Robert Jennings, James Terry, Anthony Fox, Nico Vlamovic, uh, Ed Ed, uh, I think that is David Cook uh, in the uh, 38 Bentley, Liam Bra, uh, and then we do see Fratella in P23, followed by Revok, followed by Jones, then Greg Ellis in the PLR Esports Ferrari 296, followed by Victor, Itri, Max Arrest, Broski, Stickvort, uh, Jeffrey Witter, uh, Bob Jones, I think it's, yeah, Hutton's Buttons, and then Rounding out last but not least, Osric Major and P25 of P35. Sorry, You see now there is sort of a bit of a bow sound to form as we do see this yellow flag does seem there's actually an RTG there it seems to be Osric Majors we will get a bit of a race replay as it does seem he could wide going into turn well the exit turn one as he just parks on the grass on the left side as it does seem he returns to the garage I feel like that might be another retirement it doesn't seem he had damage I'm, I'm gonna assume it's a Retirement is different generations of Lamborghinis almost battling here as we do see next gen and then we see earlier gen now as we do see Sremovic almost losing position going into turn four as we do see now Declan Brogan going very tight here with Sremovic going into turn five now as we do see Declan Brogan again being able to play defensively having the inside line to most corners as he has this advantage so far as we do see he is going to gain so much time there Villa going into turn uh, seven and eight as he actually loses a lot of time. 
two, five, six, six, seven. The seven. Wait, six and seven. Sorry, I'm, I'm going a bit insane in terms of numbers. It does seem though James Terry going side by side with Robert Jennings for position, but it does seem going into turn five. James Terry will have the advantage point. It does seem yet yeah, turn five now. He will have the advantage point as we do see that I think it's Jeffrey Witter losing the position there to what I assume is 992 of Anthony Fox. It does see now James Terry being able to gap now. Robert Jennings after getting the position now for the lead in AM class, but Robert Jennings will be trying to get that back as soon as he possibly can. Still has 90 minutes for the race to try and do it. So there is no rush at the moment. Do you see now Shremovic? All over the rear side of Declan Broken to try and get this position done once and for all. But we do see Declan Broken is glued to the inside line. Not even letting Shremovic even thinking of going for it as they go side by side going into turn four. As it does seem Shremovic is going to break later but it's not going to work. Because he actually is going to lose the position to Ville after breaking too late. And now Ville has to let him go there as they would have went side by side uh, into turn five. As now we see Declan Broken gets a bit of a gap for himself and a bit of a breathing space to Sremovic in P10 now as they will have to wait once again to catch up but it does seem Declan Brogan seems to be quite good at placing his car but it does seem Sremovic's pace seems a bit more uh, faster but Vil is well behind who is also quite a fast driver as well also looking to try to get these two positions done uh, when he can but it doesn't seem Vil's in any rush to get these positions done as he didn't battle Sremovic going into turn five which is probably more strategic call because if they two battle they are going to lose a lot of time uh to Declan Brogan in P9 but now on board with Alexander in the middle of this Ferrari Lamborghini sandwich you could say now trying to put some pressure on Zora kick in P5 to try to get on the P, uh, top five it does seem he's actually gonna go for a bit of lunge going into turn is he's going to have the inside line is it going to work though they're going to go side by side but we also see the Lamborghini also getting quite a good overspeed here and this is actually where we could see the Lamborghini getting the moves on that is an awful camera angle it seems it seems our propeller getting quite a bit of time but we do see now Alexander being able to get by going into turn four we do see now Zara kick will try to retaliate but if he retaliates too much we will see propeller getting quite a bit of an advantage of being able to try gain two positions there and now Ceramic, once again, now losing quite a bit of time to Declan Brogan, but we do see Ville becomes a bit more desperate to try and get by as they go side by side before turn five. And it seems Ville's able to get by of Ceramic after being able to battle for too long between them both. And now Ceramic goes down into P11. And Ville goes up into P10 and trying to catch Declan Brogan, who's just a favour up the road, as you can see him there, both in the same camera angles we also do see. What seems to be, I believe that's Max RS also catching up as well. Not sure where Max RS is in terms of position. Looking at the leaderboard, he seems to be P29. So he seems to be a lap down at the moment. But he is catching because of this battling that is actually starting to take place between them all. Shremovic once again trying to retaliate to get this position back from Ville, which has got to be kind of a bad idea because they're going to lose even more time to Declan Brogan for P9 with 16 minutes left of the race, which I assume is about maybe 8 laps, maybe a bit less than 8 laps left, 28 laps into the race so far. It's actually losing quite a bit of time to Ville there. It does seem the pace difference is quite major, but it does seem yet yeah, Ville being able to do his fastest lap, last lap of a 129.7, which wasn't his fastest lap, but 128.9 was his fastest lap, but saying it was a purple last lap for him. No, ACC race control is broken, so we do see Sremovic actually, what happened now, I assume it's the same thing as we saw with uh, one of the Ferrari 296s earlier, as it does seem he just got a bit loose. Going, I think he got on the apex too much and it unsettled his McLaren and going in to the gravel trap almost hitting the wall there compared to what we saw the Ferrari 296 going last time the gravel trap was able to slow him down before having any sort of contact with the wall.
you see quite a few drivers actually improving on their deltas so far into this race. It's an almost going to be contact there between Anthony Fox and Robert Jennings there. That was very close between them both. And now we're going to see Ed Ed almost go for a move going into turn one as he's all over the back of him here. But we do see Anthony Fox will not let him by just yet. In fact, it's going to be... Is that actually a blue flag? No, it's not a blue flag. I'm not sure why. Anthony Fox just let Ed Ed by there. It does seem he was quite aggressive. I'll give him that. But I'm not sure if it was worth him giving up the position with only 14 minutes left of the race. Do you see Nico going side by side into turn three? And he is going to lose quite a bit of time there to Robert Jennings. As this is not for positioning classes, it does seem. No, James Terry up the road. You can barely see him in the camera shot now. Nico being able to actually, he just, well, not even being able to get past yet. As we do see Robert Jennings is actually being able to hold off Nico now. Robert Jennings actually just got by, it seems, by looking at the logs. As he, yeah, he's just been able to get by from Robert Jennings, which now he's going to get closer to James Terry than ever. We're of about a two-second gap as we go further down now, as it does seem that battling did cause Nico and Ed Ed to catch up, which isn't great for Nico because Ed Ed is quite a fast driver, being able to get up into P19 so far since the start of the race after his little accident, but the start which led him to have quite a bit of damage now, but it seems he gets quite a good exit but it does seem though what's happened there is it seems Anthony Fox has been giving a drive through penalty uh, for track limits as we do see I'm not sure who that is but I assume that might be Seattle in the lead as it is Seattle having to uh, well edit losing quite a bit of time to have to let the leader go Andrew Jones now BMW M4 versus M4 different classes though so there is not much in terms of class points to win here but we do see Andrew Jones going for the inside line going into turn 8 now as he gets by quite swiftly and easily from Fratilia he almost just let him by that no further up once again Edit now catching up once again we do see a car of Anthony Fox going in the grass almost if that was anything like our racing or AMS2 he would have not been able to see the light of day once again but now Blamex in sight of Edit Using a bit of time going into the end of sector two, sector three starting now. Anthony Fox having to save his driver in the next two laps. So you'll see him unfortunately dropping off in places. I'm assuming he might go in this lap. Yes, he is going to go in this lap and lose a few more positions, unfortunately. A drive through penalty here going to be around 30 seconds, I believe, as we do see Nico going to go side by side going into the start of his straight before turn one. As he is going to be able to get by. Looks like Sinekin drives <laughs> turbo diesel. I will have to agree with you there. The car on the front straight, well, on the back straight, and just the straights in general, seem to have such like an advantage compared to some of these other GT3s being able to. I think it's probably 20 mile an hour difference between those two cars, it seems, just being able to get such a good acceleration. As we do see, that's going to be Daniel Montero facing the wrong ways. We also see Greg Ellis, unfortunately, getting... A drive-through penalty in the last 10 minutes of the race. We'll have to serve that before the end of the race. It's almost uh, enough to be able to go to the end of the race. But it will not be enough, unfortunately, for him to have to go back. As people say, Conrad sucks. Ah, being able to go in P1 currently with a 12 and a half second gap. Uh, others will disagree. Ben Crick as well. I'm not sure. Is Ben Crick actually racing today? I don't think he is. I'm not sure if he's racing in the championship, unfortunately. But Ben, one of the admins for PLR as well. Uh, 
<laughs> all cheats from Seattle when he reads me, he'll know. <laughs> I see broadcasting your name. I'm assuming you're a previous broadcaster as well. I'm going to be starting to drop off in the amount of broadcasting I'll be able to do because I've got my GCSEs soon, which sucks if you don't know what GCSEs are because you're not from the UK. It's basically secondary education certificate. I've seen that Zoro kick just being able to get by there. I'm assuming, yeah, that's Greg Ellis who had to just serve his drive through penalty. So he goes down a few more positions, but it seemed to be only one. So it seems the top, bottom 20 seem to be separated by quite some time. It could be a few minutes between a few of them, it seems. Going further up, it does seem Declan broken under even more pressure than ever. But it does seem this time he's the one battling with. Daniel Montoro, as we did see, he did have a bit of an incident going to turn one a few laps ago. David Crook driving. Yeah, he was. Uh, I've not seen David Crook uh, before, but he is one of the only people in that Bentley. Currently in the Tectico Cosworth Bentley. As we do see, that is a slow car. I'm not sure who that is. It's a rejoin, so I'm hoping he doesn't interfere with traffic there. It does seem he is still slow there. I'm not sure if he's going to let. David Crick's the founder of PLR. Oh. I'll be honest, I didn't know that. To be honest, I, I'm not really sure of many people in PLR. Obviously, I know the odd few people from other mutual leagues that I also broadcast in years and years ago. Yeah, I, for I forgot Conrad's uh, also uh, in the admin team. He doesn't seem to uh, speak as much in discords. I, I don't usually check the discord much unless it's race day or something. There's some key information I need to know, but sometimes I check it as well for announcements and stuff like that. Well, that's really much the same with quite a few of the discords I'm in, unless it's people I know really, really well. <laughs> I think there's only like three discords that I'm actually somewhat active in. I just don't use Discord much at all, but it's obviously a great tool for sim racing as well, being able to make communities such as Pro League Racing. Obviously, there's a few people in here as well who own their own leagues, some being more major than others. But it's good to see that there's a lot of mutual drivers in this from other leagues as well, which does just bring quite a closer community within each other. Build is packed with great drivers. I'll agree with you with that. It seems to be quite a fast pack here today. 128.6, the fastest lap as we've seen during uh, the race. But in, I think it was qualifying, Conrad was alien enough to say, I think it was a 127.3 dead. I remember that correctly it might be a bit faster coming into the end of it <laughs> so many Croatians Jesus Christ thinking I love you battling for p3 it doesn't seem they are they're still quite far apart from each other I'll keep an eye out on it, but we do see though Ededs is quite close yet with Nico full position as we go on board with Nico. So we can use his wing for reference to see how much time he gains on the slipstream, but it does seem he tried pulling out there to try go for the inside line, but he isn't going to have enough overspeed to do it before turn one. Will he get the better exit into turn one? It doesn't seem he does. It seems Nico gets on that curve a lot better than the McLarens there because obviously the front engine cars can take the curves or well, tolerate the curves quite a bit more than the others as we do see he's also battling with position in front of him with James Terry for position we do see James Terry making a bit of a mistake there causing Nico to get the inside line going into turn three and that does leave Nico going up into P15 then and then Nico going down into well Nico going up into P15 James Terry going down to P16 Great to see so many people in chat today. Hope everyone's doing 
great on Monday evening, even though it's Monday, but hey ho. Do you see now there's nearly contact between both of them there, Edded. Uh, just getting quite a bit of line there from James Terry compared to him, sorry. That's going to cause now Edded to be all over the back of James Terry, and this could lead to uh, James Terry being quite cautious going on to uh, the start finish straight and under the threat of losing his position of P16 within a lap range of when he just lost it to Nico as well. So now he almost looks to go for the inside going into turn three. But he is just going to have to back off slightly because he's not far or uh, well, close enough to be able to do it. He's too far away. Cino is going to be all over the back of him there. It does seem he's actually going to lose a lot of time there. James Terry's, it does him the overspeed they're coming from. Edit's not going to be enough as we do see Edit just gets past with flying colours as he goes into turn five. Already quite a big gap now as we do see Robert Jennings trying to get involved with this as well as it wasn't too uh, long ago till he was actually retaliating to get past James Terry. But James Terry is currently in P1 uh, in the AM class, but we see Robert Jennings wanting to take P1. Uh, in the AMS class, but we do see Dabrowski getting a drive through penalty for track limits. This is the third one we've seen today. Uh, the other two already being served in previous laps. Not sure who Juan is. Um, apologize, I'm assuming it's someone in chat. Unless you're talking about the other commentator, because that wouldn't be me. <laughs> does seem that we're starting to see a drop off in uh, some battles here but that is always going to happen towards the end of the race but I'm surprised we've had so many battles going into this could make the season quite interesting and quite unpredictable in terms of the championship we do see Andrew Jones losing a tiny bit of time now going into start finish straight Itchery being able to get quite a good exit going into turn nine and it's going to leave him all the way already having about a three tenth gap to him and that will help him a lot with the slipstream Does seem that they're going to go side by going into turn three. Does seem Andrew Jones has the inside line going into it, but it isn't going to work there because it seems Itchy had quite a fast thing going on the outside line, carrying quite a bit of speed and momentum, just being able to defend his position onto the final lap soon. Now, as we do see, he's also going to try to take the inside line, but still take it quite wide to try and get some sort of improvised racing line to not lose too much time. As we can see, gain quite a bit of time going into turn four. Now, turn five. This is probably where the BMW does shine going into the end corners before going to turn, well not turn, well yeah turn 6 but going on to sector 3 where you see this huge sausage curb right here on the inside. The yellow curbs can be quite deadly for some of these front to mid engine cars such as the Ferrari and other cars like that with the more dodgy suspension as we do see now. BMW M4, Andrew Jones all over the back of Enrico Itchery. E3 Racing 296 going in as we do see there's actually a yellow flag there I'm not sure what that's for if that's for fuel I can't tell you because it doesn't tell me anything but now it seems Enrico under a lot of pressure here of losing his position is he going to try force the inside line no he is not it seems Andrew Jones is going to go for the inside line going into turn one and he does seem to make contact between both of them and that's going to leave Enrico with quite a bit of damage to the front side of his Ferrari 296 and that is going to leave Andrew Jones to go into his uh, into P23 with quite a big gap now and under pressure of getting overlapped it seems because this is actually the top drivers of I think that is Zorik currently in P7 trying to overlap Enrico Itri as we do see Conrad saying he's coming onto the final lap now 
uh, of round one here. It's been quite a good round to say the least. It's been quite clean as well. We haven't seen too many uh, incidents here as it has been. Uh, quite clean. There has been obviously the odd few incidents that we've seen here and there. But that is just to see. But we haven't seen any major uh, incidents. Mainly because this is quite an easy track to uh, avoid incidents with quite quite steep runoff areas as you can see especially going into turn three turn one as well even though it has that dodgy sausage curve that can actually send you absolutely flying it doesn't seem no nico being able to get past well no edit being able to get past nico here on the final lap for him which is actually quite impressive and then he goes up into what seems to be p15 for his final position unless he can get past tom week in the final few corners he is gaining quite a bit of time here on Tom Week, but it's not going to be enough time. In fact, he probably has to try and defend from Nico going into the final few corners of Sector 2 and going into Sector 3 for the final time. As we go on board with the leader for the final two corners to watch him take home the flag for round one. So it does seem now Conrad going through the final corner here, taking the win for round one of the world tour season two being able to increase his gap in the championship already that's going to leave him with quite a hefty point difference already but dean zonobovic going into the final few corners as well coming home in p2 going through the line as well this might be quite a close championship between him and zonobovic and then we see alavi quite far up the road as well but under a bit of pressure from Vink and P4 to actually lose that bronze step on the podium. But he is too far back to worry about that for now. As he comes across the line to take P3, the final podium step there. I'll have you P3. And then we do see Vink in the SM Martin into P4. Followed then by Alexander Hughes, quite far behind between the both as he comes across the line now. Take a P5 for round one, followed then by Popila going in to P6. And then writer engineering of Ville, I'll have to bow down to him there. Taking the Ville and the writer engineering home into P7. Then we do see quite a few people actually already finishing Eric Magiro. We do see now Shremovic going across the line. Chris Lyon to take P10 there for the first round, followed then by Declan Brogan just behind him. Then we see Daniel Montero and then Chris Broadman as well. Then followed by Tom Week, Edit, Nico, James Terry, Cook, uh, Bow, and then we do see Revok, Anthony Fox, uh, Jones, Enrico Itchri, Greg Ellis, Victor, Max Ares, Fratrilia, uh, Dabrowski, Jeffrey Witter, Strickvort, uh, Buttons, Jones. Paul Weller and then Otrick Major, who I believe DNF there. Unfortunate there for him. But that would be now the end uh, of round one here. It's been quite an interesting round. Good, uh, well done for most of the drivers for finishing. There was unfortunately a few DNFs going into the end of the race. In fact, we, we ended with, I believe, 29 drivers. So we did lose quite a few since the start of the race. I have been. Your commentator for tonight, Alex, also known as Aces in the Discord. I will be here for round two next week, every Monday, until I believe somewhat in the mid of May. Not sure how many rounds there is. And I believe it's Paul Ricard. I might be wrong with that. I might be mixing it up with another league. But I will see you guys later. Have a great rest of your evening, and I will see you for round two.